Hi guys, today we're talking practical Christianity. Alright, so I'm going to play this clip and then I am going to show you how this guy just kind of encapsulates all the ways that the Bible works, why it's true, etc. So let me just play it. He does it kind of in the negative, right? He says, if you don't have this, then I'm coming for you. But anyway, let me just play it and then we'll get to it. Y'all better be paying attention. There are certain characteristics that you look for in children before molesting them. In children, yes, but more I also looked at their families. If I thought the father was a threat, I would not approach the child. If I thought that the child had friends that he would tell, I would not approach him. So perhaps a, a, a child that doesn't really have a whole lot of friends, maybe not really a strong family, things like that. You know, it's no spiritual values, um, weak in education, you know, needs help in many ways. Um, even from uh, split parenting, you know, has a mother who may be having problems with the family, you know, well, here comes superhero in to help out, you know, wow, well, thank you very much. No problem. You ever need me to take him away for the night so you can have a night out? No problem. It works. All right, so that's a bit scary. Like I said, this is, this is in the negative, right? He tells you all the things that the child doesn't have, and that's what he looks for to grab up and molest. So how does this prove how the Bible true, what it says is true? Okay, so I had to do some notes because my brain just went everywhere. All right, so let's just use what he talked about initially, right? Okay, spiritual values. He talks about kids without spiritual values. And this really ties, three of these really tie all together. But let's just go with them one by one. Spiritual values set out in the Bible, set proper hierarchy. So who's in charge, who's not, how to deal with them, what respect looks like, etc. Sets out support systems. So that's friends. You have to have proper friends who will defend you, um, when you're not doing something you're supposed to, then they let you know. When your idea is terrible, they let you know. If you want to go do something good, then they're all for it and they support that, right? So, what's the next one? And boundaries. These guys, these predators, flourish because people don't understand boundaries. And where, how to, again, how people fit in the hierarchy of their lives, okay? Family, the family structure, one man, one woman, what's he say here? The man and the woman are together in marriage and then they have a kid, right? He says that if there isn't, uh, or if there is a father there, he won't generally go after the kid because he's afraid he's gonna get beat up or something's gonna happen to him. But if there's a single mother, then he will ingratiate himself by saying, hey, oh, let me help you. Oh, hey, you're tired. Let me watch the kid. Oh, hey, whatever. And then he has unfettered access to that child. What's the best way to make sure that doesn't happen? A two-parent household, a mother and a father there to help and protect each other and their children. That is a biblical concept. That is what the Bible says you're supposed to do. All right. Let's go on. Number three, the third thing he talked about was education, right? So he says, if the kid doesn't have a whole lot of education, a lot of things that he lacks or needs, right? This ties back to spiritual values because spiritual values are teaching you about everything. Spiritual values teach you about life, who to trust, who not to trust, who to let in, who not to let in. The hierarchy even of the people that you do let in, where do they fit in your life? How much do they get a say into your life? Who you're supposed to go to for help, who you're not supposed to go to for help, etc. All right, it, it really covers everything and the Bible has it all. It has the whole system in there. Christians do this mainly through church. If you're 
in church, you can make friends with the same values you have, or at least very similar ones, right? Very, very close. Um, and these people are the people you go to for help. These people are the ones that you go to when you're trying to just have fun with somebody and in a safe way. These people are the people who will look out for you because they will be the good friends that will look out for you. This is how Christianity has created a, a good society, a society that's worth fighting for that we have in America now. Okay. This guy, by doing the negative, by saying, well, if the kid doesn't have X, Y, Z, then I can, I'll go after him. I'll try. The Bible literally protects you from all of these things. It, and it gives you the way to live life, money, people, uh, people, you know, the foreigner, everything, everything. It has it in there. All right. So all of these things keep us safe from people who want us to do us harm. The Bible teach you confidence because if you know how to deal with things, then there's no reason to feel, um, what, what's the opposite of confidence? <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for you to feel like shy or whatever. You have, you know how to do this. You know you can do this because you've seen other people do it. You've been taught how to do it. You've done it with someone. You know, there's lots of support in the church. <clears throat> so you have confidence. You have education. The Bible is big on education. And the verse that I use for this is Deuteronomy 6-7. Deuteronomy 6, 7 talks about how parents are supposed to take their kids around everywhere and teach them the precepts of God everywhere they're going. When they lay down, when they sit down, when they're working, when they're doing it, like everywhere all the time. Well, not only will you learn what God thinks about this and what you're supposed to do as a Christian, but you'll just learn how people are supposed to deal with you at all, at all age, no matter what age you are. If you're going out with them at 6, at 16, at 10... At 32, whatever, you will begin to understand how people appropriately deal with you. So then this guy comes up and he doesn't deal with you appropriately in his speech. And the way he talks to you isn't right. The way he wants to deal with you isn't right. It clues you in. Oh, I don't need to be around this guy. All right. It is so, um, so it, so in Deuteronomy 6, 7, <laughs> Sorry, I had to get had to reel myself back in. In Deuteronomy 6, 7, it is more than just educating about God, but about life, the world. You're going to learn math. You're going to learn your speech, whatever it is, whatever language you're learning. You're going to learn it all. Okay, so this, it was just mind-blowing to me. This thing's like a minute, maybe 30 seconds long, and it encapsulates everything that, or every way that the Bible keeps you safe and how it creates a good, not economy, but I'm trying to think of the word. I just have used it already in this video. And I already forgot it, but, um, how it creates a good society because a society where people look out for each other. If you know how to do something, then you educate someone else. Now they know how to do it and everybody can at least have good outcomes because they can do things to the best of their ability. All right. And I'm just going to leave it there, guys. Let me know what you think down the bottom, down in the comments, or if you're listening to this on, on the podcast, guys, you know, just let me know. Shoot me an email, sleepybluekitty at gmail, or no, no, sleepybluekitty at proton.me. And uh, just let me know what you think. I'm really curious to hear it. Um, I think that this is very important. This is a great thing to share with people who you might be talking about the Bible too. Um, anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Remember to pray and read your Bible. Bye.